a revolutionary new way to clean dirt and debris from outdoor surfaces without electricity or batteries. And when you're finished, the litter critter stays out of your way. You didn't buy that, Herbert! I'm not crazy! I laced it! The Litter Critter, a sweeping improvement from ShopVac. ESPN comes out swinging. Play ball! With live Monday night college baseball, powerhouse slumbers from Texas, Miami, defending national champion Arizona and other schools provide hard-hitting excitement. ESPN gives you a box seat view with award-winning coverage. It all leads to ESPN's exclusive live presentation of the College World Series, live Monday night college baseball, only on ESPN. Behold the Isuzu Pup, the lowest price truck in America. About $6. Buy a pup now and you can get 3.9% financing or 500 pounds of bananas. Why, I saved enough money to buy this island. And all the fish. Tenumeli, Kiki Bobo. Hurry, 3.9% financing or $500 rebate offer ends soon. Before a big match, it's nice to sit down and read a book or do some writing. And I'd probably warm up about 45 minutes. Five minutes prior to the match, first off, butterflies are, are all over the place. I'm usually stretching. Maybe getting last minute instructions from my coach. But actually, the last thing I do is make sure my shoes are tied tight. Prince, let the games begin. is sold out tonight. Over 16,000, most of them Chicagoans, and they're here to see the Paul Blue Demons meet the Bulldogs of Louisiana Tech. And a very pleasant good evening, everybody. I'm Mick Huber. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play and working alongside is Gary Thompson. We're glad you're with us for this NCAA Midwest Region first round game. And as far as the ball is concerned, Gary, it's a little bit of a good news, bad news situation. Well, it certainly is. The good news is they're playing at home here in the horizon. The bad news is that they have Rod Strickland and Kevin Edwards, their two starting guards. They've been weakened a little bit with the flu. They've had the virus and missed a lot of practice this week. And Stanley Brundy has the bandage hand a little bit. And they've also, DePaul won 17 consecutive games here. The Blue Demons are seated third. Louisiana Tech seated 14th. And really not all that happy about it, Gary. Well, I think they have a right to feel that way. They played UNLV at Vegas to a four-point ball game, went out to the Far West Classic. They won that. They beat three Pac-10 teams, beating Washington, Oregon State, and Oregon. And when you talk about Louisiana Tech, they've got a powerful inside game led by Robert Godbull. Well, he's a terrific inside player. He's their leading scorer. He shoots 64% plus from his field. That's sixth best nationally. Joey Myers' team has three guards. They're quick, uh, they're quick and strong, but Dallas Comedy is a force inside. Well, Comedy has really come on strong this season. He's their leading rebounder, leading scorer, was just named to the third All-American team. It's an electrifying building tonight, the Rosemont Horizon. The Blue Demons are 26-2, and, and Louisiana Tech is 22-7. And, and we'll return to the starting lineup in just a moment. Today's NCAA Tournament first round game is being brought to you by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet, and by Michelob. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive taste is why the night belongs to Michelob. favorite players and teams in the sporting news the fans favorite for over 100 years 
All the news and stats and standings, everything you want, every week, starting with the big baseball special preview issue. Grab a pencil, and here's a friend with all the details. Save more than half off the single copy price and get 38 issues of the Sporting News for three payments of $7.16. That's 48% off the regular price, plus the guide to baseball nicknames. Call 1-800-592-6000. This is Mick Hubert along with Gary Thompson back at the Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, where we're just seconds away from the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs and the DePaul Blue Demons. Interesting matchup in that Louisiana Tech is shooting 52% from the floor. That's ninth nationally. And DePaul, conversely, the defensive field goal percentage is only 41%. We'll see how it shapes up. But now, here's Jim Reban for the introduction of the starting lineups. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and once again, welcome to the Rosemont Horizon and tonight's first-round game in the Midwest Regional of the 1987 NCAA Men's Division I College Basketball Tournament. This first round game is between the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs of the Southland Conference with a record of 22 and seven and the DePaul University Blue Demons and Independents with a record of 26 and two. And now here are the starting lineups. First for Louisiana Tech at a forward position, 6'8 and a senior from Monticello, Arkansas, number 30, Lewis Cook. At forward for DePaul, 6'9 and a junior from Jackson, Michigan, 55, Kevin Golden. At forward for Louisiana Tech, 6'5 and a senior from Detroit, Michigan, 45, Robert Gottbolt. At forward for DePaul, 6'4 and a sophomore from Flint, Michigan, 13, Terrence Green. At center for Louisiana Tech, 6'8 and a sophomore from Shreveport, Louisiana, 52, Randy White. At center for DePaul, 6'9 and a senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 35, Dallas Kamaji. At one guard for Louisiana Tech, 6'2 and a junior from Gippsland, Louisiana, number 20, Kelvin Lewis. And at guard for DePaul, 6'3 and a junior from Cleveland Heights, Ohio, number 20, Kevin Edwards. And at a guard for Louisiana Tech, 6'4 and a sophomore from West Monroe, Louisiana, number 40, Byron Newton. And at guard for DePaul, 6'3 and a sophomore from the Bronx, New York, number 10, Rod Strickland. The Bulldogs coach, a 1972 graduate of Louisiana Tech in his second season, Tommy Joe Eagles. The Blue Demons coach, a 1971 graduate of DePaul in his third season, Joey Meyer. Louisiana Tech, 22 and 7, DePaul, 26 and We'll have the opening tip-off after these messages. ESPN Home Video presents Teaching Kids Basketball with John Wooden. In this 75-minute instructional video, UCLA's legendary Coach Wooden shares his unique method of teaching kids the fundamentals of basketball, along with his personal ideas for success in the game. My definition of success is peace of mind, which can be attained only through self-satisfaction in knowing that you made the effort to do the best that you're capable of doing. The training begins with demonstrations of the basics of passing, dribbling, shooting, and defense strategy, along with segments on injury prevention, conditioning tips, and drills for coordination. Throughout the training, Coach Wooden stresses the keys to success are individual skills and proper mental attitude. It's a wonderful sport that they can enjoy and love just to play. Teaching Kids Basketball with John Wooden can be yours for just $39.95. Order your copy today by calling 1-800-554-9000. Only from ESPN Home Video, the best in quality video cassette. The officials as assigned by the NCAA, Scott Thornley, Joe Forty, and Don Ferguson.
Cook and Godbold up front. White in the middle. Lewis and Newton at the backcourt for Louisiana Tech. 52% field goal shooting for Louisiana Tech. 51 for DePaul. Nick, if things go the way it's been all year for the Demons, they should get this opening tip. Comages has controlled the opening tip 24 out of 28 games. Comages at 6'9". Lewis Cook at 6'8". They're on their feet in the horizon. And we're going to have, after DePaul gets the tip, Dallas Comages apparently got something in his eye. Joey Miners is probably wondering what else can happen. All the uh, flu and the virus bucket they've had this week. And then, as you mentioned, uh, Lundy went down with a sprained ligament. Let's see if we can see what happens here. His comedies, oh. and his finger looks like his own finger. His hand was knocked in into his eye. So we've had a first already, a replay on the jump ball. Comedies, 14 footer, took the rebound. Louisiana Tech averaging 72 points per game. The ball's defense yields just 62. That's 12th in the nation. Tech won the Southland Conference regular season and tournament championship. They're an inside game. Their scoring comes from those inside people. Cook missing. Godbolt puts it back up. Godbolt, the left-hander, averaging 16 a game. And Louisiana Tech takes the first score of the contest. Just being left-handed makes it difficult. It seems like it's always tough to cover those left-handers. That ball seems to come out of a, another shoot. Golden missing. That's surprise. Golden only takes it four shots a ball game on the average. It doesn't normally look to shoot that much. Louisiana Tech comes out with a basketball. The Bulldogs leading 2-0. Keys in this ball game could be the guard play of Louisiana Tech. Calvin Lewis handling the ball there, number 20. They started out. He has come on strong as of lately. He was pretty shaky in the early going of the season, handling the ball, making a lot of turnovers, but really cut it down in the last six to ten games. And a traveling call against Louisiana Tech gives the ball back to DePaul. We played a minute and a half. Blue Demons have yet to score. The ball, fifth ranked in the country third in the Midwest region. Louisiana Tech has really got their work cut out for them in this game. Playing here in the horizon, as you said, number five. But Louisiana Tech is a good, solid ball club. Hamaji, averaging 17 and a half, but he's averaged 21 over his last four games. He just said at his press conference yesterday, he's just playing more relaxed this year. He's enjoying the game a lot more. Not looking up or waiting for other players to do the job. He's taking it upon himself. Cook missing. Outlet, Terrence Green. Centers the break. Nice dish off to Strickland. Edwards, the junior college transfer, missing. Tomajis is hammered. Well, Tomajis, no question about it, Gary, came to play, as they say. He is in this game. He said yesterday also that they're loose. They're not worried about pass. The ball games. Here you see, goes down, takes it up strong, gets grabbed right there. Kamajis had shooting free throw problems early in his career, but not lately. He's made 22 of his last 24. Perhaps a good omen for Louisiana Tech is Kamajis misses the first for the year. He's a 76% free thrower. Wasn't his best effort on that first one. Planks a couple. But Tech can't control it. And so Tommy Joe Eagles team will stay on the defensive. As the ball will inbound. Good look at Tommy Joe there. Played at Tech uh, during the 68-71 seasons. Was captain of that ball club his senior year. Game tied at two. And Strickland with a basketball. And Strickland, one of the really fine point guards in the country. Out of the Bronx, New York. Green. He walked. Green, one of the real great athletes on this floor tonight, a high school All-American in both football and basketball. His junior year out of Flint, Michigan, he was voted the best football player in Michigan. And that's, that's quite a statement because there are a lot of great football players coming out of Michigan. That is saying something. Byron Newton, stripped of the ball. Strickland gets it down. Edwards takes it all away, and DePaul takes the lead. Well, that pressure defense of DePaul, they like to press and they like to run. 
Louisiana Tech is going to want to play in a half-court game. As we said before, get it inside. Big load on the shoulders of that young man handling the ball right now. Kelvin Lewis, they call him Kelvo. God ball traveled in the corner. So Tommy Joe Eagles is standing. Joey Meyer is also on his feet. And the Paul Blue Demon cheerleaders are happy. The Blue Demons with a 4-2 lead. 16.50 remaining in the first half. Well, this DePaul club really kind of snuck up on people this season. They weren't expected to do that much. They just come right along. Here they are, 26 and 2. Strickland, stutter step dribble, lost their handle out of bounds. A turnover against the Blue Demons, and Louisiana Tech will have the ball. Tech has won six straight in eight of its last nine. Earlier this year, Tech reeled off nine consecutive victories. Tech offense there at a, a one four picking down on the inside men. White missing, but the tip is good. It's a good court club. Louisiana Tech, they have a rebound margin of a little over five rebounds a game on their opponents. So they're tough on the inside on the glass. Dodgold with all four of the Tech points. Kamaji's in the lane. And he is tied up by Kelvin Lewis. And on the alternating possession, it will be Louisiana Tech basketball. Look at Dallas Connors, as we mentioned, uh, made the third All-American team. He's going to see a, and have a lot of company during the night. When he gets it, you're going to see a lot of people ducking back, going to the ball. Kelvin Lewis plays left side to big Randy White. White 6'8", 225 on a three foot. Got the ball chasing man for man. Lewis spin dribble. Strickland tied for the steal. And DePaul picks up the steal. Terrence Green wheeling and dealing. Great dish off. Super pass right there, and then the stop. Edwards has four, and DePaul leads 6-4. Edwards with his 30th dunk of the season. And Edwards only 6-3. He's the kid that they say kind of put this club together, along with comedy he's coming through. He's a transfer out of Lakeland Community College in Ohio, a second-team junior college All-American. Terrence Green hesitated, thinking it was off a bulldog, but instead it was off Green, and so Louisiana Tech will have the ball and a chance to tie the game. Couldn't quite tell whether Green, well, let's take a look right here. Ball goes off, definitely off his hand, but I think what he wanted and thought was that he should have had a foul on the ground. Elbow Lewis, quarterbacking Louisiana Tech. Right low posting to Cook. Newton. Newton, a real physical guard. Partially deflected there by Comages, and DePaul gets the ball. The Blue Demons winning 6-4. Comages, the Demons' all-time shot blocker, has 291 past the great player that played here, George Mike, and quite a while ago as far as shot block. And with 14 minutes and 39 seconds, we're going to take a break in this first half action with the score. DePaul 6 and Louisiana Tech 4. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Feel it in a 350 V8 Chevy with the most available power of any half-ton pickup. Nothing works like a Chevy truck. The heartbeat of America. Investing these days is a little like you playing tennis against Jimmy Connors. You're going to need all the professional help you can get. Payne Weber's capital management team is ready to provide that help right now. Because whether you run a company or invest in one, Payne Weber believes the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Hey, great match. Hi, Jimmy. Thank you, Payne Weber. Next time I'm with those guys on my team, okay? DePaul leading Louisiana Tech with a score of 6-4. to four. Terrence Green takes the ball and makes a great feed and sets up the Edwards slam. Just a little underhand flip right there to Edwards. Edwards only 6-3, and as you mentioned, his 30th dunk of the season. That's the kind of action the Demon fans love to see here at the horizon. The 
the ball with five turnovers. Louisiana Tech with four. And how has that translated into points? Well, the ball has picked up six points, and Tech has a pair. It's been a good part of the uh, the ball offense this year is turnovers, uh, scoring off turnover situations, of course, with that press and getting down the break. Terrence Green will play it in. They come way out of the top to Strickland. Strickland leading the Blue Demons in assists. Three-pointer. Doesn't hasn't shot that many three-point shots. Six out of eleven on the season. The ball with a five-point lead. That's Lewis Cook looking inside. Randy White. Elvin Lewis. Good offense is playing right inside the uh, free throw line. Got a trap. Another turnover against Louisiana Tech, and DePaul forces the opposition into 16 turnovers per game. Louisiana Tech starting out just a little over anxious inside, trying to do things uh, just a little bit out of control here in early going. I think a key right here is for them to stay with DePaul in the early moments and get their confidence. Green. Rebound comes down to Byron Newton. Lewis Cook runs it into the fourth court. Great speed in the lane. White. Kamaji made the play. The ball comes away with the ball. Strickland down to Green on the baseline. He just capped that ball. Ooh, and a big block on the other end by Randy White. Also a little bit too much contact by White. What you like to see out of a man right here comes comedies in here. Great block right now. And then comes down the other court. Down court here. Golden kicks it out. Look who's going to come in and end up on the tail end of this play. Down inside. Comedy's hustling down. Underneath goes up and then he gets hammered. Good hustle by Comedy's getting back down court. Maurice Jackson into the game for Louisiana Tech replacing White. And he locks into the game for the ball. Comedy's toes the free throw line. One of three tonight for Dallas, a three-point game. Heard Joey's dad talk about uh, Ray Meyer, talking about the best move he made this year was making Dallas Comedies the co-captain. Then put some responsibility on him, and he's really taken to that responsibility. Golden had it, lost it, picked up by Green. Here comes the ball. Green looking up court, wheeling and dealing. Spin move. And a foul has been whistled against Louisiana Tech. Or check it. We're going to say against Green. The crowd, of course, heavily partisan for DePaul. They don't like it. We'll take another look. Green, the great athlete's going to spin here. Calvin Lewis is, goes into traffic, and I think right there it was uh, Newton that actually had the position on him and good help on the defense. 13 minutes, 13 seconds remaining in the first half. DePaul leading Louisiana Tech 10-4. Scott Bolt leading the Cook down low. Cook second try, no. Body ball around. Here comes Edwards. The ball will set it, leading by six. Kamaji's great drive and a dish to Golden. And a foul on Louisiana Tech. Great penetration by the Blue Demons. Demons really tacking down inside. They're getting everything down underneath. The Bulldogs first ball, 32, Maurice Jackson. Well, Jackson, who just came into the game moments ago, picks up his first personal foul. And Golden will go to the free throw line where he's a 73.7 shooter. Golden, born in Jackson, Michigan. They're born in Denver and recruited out of Jackson, Michigan. Started all 28 games this season. He only played 63 minutes uh, last year. So what improvement he's made. He's a good role player. He doesn't participate in the offense that much, averaging three points a ball game. Concentrates on defense and rebound. The ball has a seven-point lead. It's 11-4. Maurice Jackson. Jackson, a good outside shooter. Now Joe Eagle probably getting him in there, trying to take some pressure off that inside game. The whistle goes against the ball. Number 10, Rod Strickland re-enters the lineup. Replacing T. Green. The personal was on Green. His second Green. Picked up his second foul. Strickland comes back. And Stanley Bundy, you see, coming in. He hurt his hand in practice this week. A, a ligament damage. He's playing it taped up here. He certainly looks a lot better tonight than he did yesterday in practice. They had it bandaged up. Looks like there's no way. Comedies 
Swats that ball nearly into the flames. Let's watch Dallas here. Wade stays down and then goes up, times his jump. Godbold only 6'5. No way he's going to hit above Comedy. Valmagees has blocked the shot now in 34 consecutive games. Kind of like Camaggio's too. That's going to be uh, start to become an intimidating factor underneath the Louisiana Tech. Their game is inside. They have Comedy's blocking those shots. It starts to get on you after a while. Godbold has all six of the Tech points. Credit Cook making a great feed that time. They get the ball inside to Godbold. 11 6 to fall by five. The Demons with the ball. Edwards. Picked up in the corner by Byron Newton. Newton, top of the circle. And Lewis works against Strickland. And the Bulldogs, they're going to like the half court game. They're going to have to play a lot of it rather than getting up down the court. And just as you call it, Gary, Jackson comes in and knocks the long one down. Well, they've got to have something to open up the inside game because the ball just really laying off inside, trying to jam up that trio. Godbolt, Cook, and White, all good shooters, all over 50%. There's Jackson fouling. He knocked it away, but he also got a little bit of college. And for Maurice, and a B.B. Arkansas, his second foul. B.B. Arkansas, he was the player of the year in Arkansas in high school, and he's transferred out of West Ark Junior College. Of course, that's in Arkansas. So his second, that's the fifth team foul on Louisiana Tech. Lauchs will play it in. And Strickland has it. High posting the ball to Kamajis. Kamajis is high. Good jump here by Kamajis and good extension on that shot. He really had it up high. Lewis, left side to Lewis Cook. Delvin Lewis with the ball. Louisiana Tech making its third NCAA appearance in the last four years. Cook flashes through the lane. Can't get a shot to go. Cook is he scored yet. No, he, he started the season off very well, shooting very well as of late. He's kind of backed off. Has not scored well, has really has not been looking for a shot. It's a real hesitant. They want him to score, they want him to shoot. Damages tries to feed to Grundy. Strickland, great move. Oh, what a first step by Strickland. 15 to 9 to Paul by 6. Strickland's averaged almost 20 points in his last seven games that he's played. He's 16 on the year. Tech needs a hoop here. 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Godbolt out high. Long jumper by Newton. Rebound comes down to Edwards. Tommy Joe Eagles not happy at this point. Good hustle by Godbold stepping in there, making the interception. Bulldogs can't lose sight of what they want to do and what they do best, and that's try and get it inside. I think that's their first, first goal that they have to look at and then bounce it back outside. And they want to talk about it. Timeout, Louisiana Tech. 9.36 remaining in the first half, and DePaul leading by six. Important big deals. Sir, excuse me, but there's one big deal you haven't made. Yeah, right, kid. You see, I'm uh, talking about a deal on Sports Illustrated. Oh, Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated? Yeah. A savings one at 50% off the cover price. 27 wow. action packed weeks for three installments of just $9.79 each. Wow. Kid, you're a hit. Hit! What about free videotape? The NFL Crunch Cores. It's 43 minutes of the NFL's greatest hits. It makes a smashing gift, and it's free with your paid subscription. Free. Plus, you get their 87 baseball preview with schedule and their famous oh. swimsuit issue. Major League! Just call a toll-free number. You can even use your credit card. That's right. Get the savings, the schedule, the special issues, and the free crunch force tape. That's the big news. Any questions, gentlemen? Where, Where are the phones? phones? Uh, <laughs> that'll be all right. Sports Illustrated. Get the feeling. Call now. 1-800-525-5500. Listen to the heartbeat
When you need a truck you can lean on, America knows nothing works like a tough Chevy truck. Come on, America. That's today's Chevy truck. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Transportation arrangements provided through Fugazi International Travel, the official travel agency for NCAA championships. Strickland leads this club in assists, but Harry will show that he can go it alone there. What a tremendous move, taking the ball up, showing it to the defensive man, then pulling it down and laying it soft up off the glass. The ball is 6 of 12 from the floor for 50%. Tech is 4 of 16 for a frigid 25%. Elvin Lewis with the ball. Gets around Strickland to the baseline. That's Randy White. And Brundy got him. First foul of the game on Stanley Brundy out of Crenshaw High School in Los Angeles. The DePaul personal, 23, Stanley Brundy, his first. Same high school that produced Marcus Johnson and Daryl Strawberry and Randy a White host of two shots. great athletes. White, a 67% free thrower on the line for Tech. White averages 12.7 a game. And his Tech's leading rebounder. Playing in the Southland Conference, he was named to the second team all-conference. Yeah, fine player. Grundy comes out with the ball. Strickland. He may have walked or he may have uh, gotten a little bit uh, up court. But the foul is going to be on Strickland. He would have been ball better ball to have the walk call against him. Watch here. He didn't have much of a chance, didn't have control. But anytime young kids watch, when you catch that ball going over your shoulder looking back, the first move you should make is a step out at a 45 degree angle. And you'll avoid that charge. First foul on Strickland, fourth team foul of the fall. Tech has been whistled for five fouls here on the first day. And another Louisiana Tech turnover. They were in the ball game there. Their motion offense started to cut away. Misfire. So DePaul leading Louisiana Tech 15 to 10. Nine minutes remaining in the first half. That's Lugs. Reversing right side to Green. Good entry down low to Strickland. Lewis knocked it away, and so DePaul will retain possession. Well, official is right on the call, but Strickland did a good job of trying to draw the foul. He knows when he went up and got a block, he kind of threw his hands up. Dipped to indicate he got fouled. Official right on the play. Strickland got a move around Lewis. High arcing shot. That almost brought rain. He really got it up there. Seven for Strickland. Largest lead of the game. Seven for DePaul. Godbold clears it left side. Jackson. Three Second three-pointer for Jackson. He had three three-pointers in the Southland Conference title game against Arkansas State. Really sparked them. And he's 12 out of 28 on the year for the three-point range. Tomajis. Oh, he forced it. Good job by Godbolt there. That's some quickness inside. Brett Guillory in the game, number four for Louisiana Tech. White from 16. And Tech, you're making a run. That's right, and they're opening it up from outside. Talk about the outside shooting, opening up the inside game. They're answering the bell right now. They're close to two. So the crowd now coming to life here on their horizon, trying to root the home team on. Tomaji. He gets the big hoop. He's got seven points. Nothing you can do about that play right there. If he gets the ball down that low and turns, goes up, he shoots it so high, releases so high, they're not going to block the shot. Lewis will reset. That's Guillory with the ball. Dodgebolt out of Detroit has a shot. Left-hander can't buy it, and the rebound to Brundy. Here's Strickland in the center. Dishes off to Brundy. Give the assist to Strickland, and Brundy filled the lane very well. He'll get the hoop, but he'll also get charged with the foul. It'll be a charging foul. Here's Strickland. Does a good job of waiting for his wingman to get there. Get bounce pass. Brundy goes up. Guillory just sitting there waiting on him. Good call. Lewis 
Blue Demons have gone into that, that zone. Hillary missing. Kamaji's high in the sky for the rebound. Just playing that zone the last few possessions. I'm, one of the reasons, too, might be the fact that these kids have had the buyers give them to a rest a little bit. That motion offense is tough on you. Kamaji's with nine. Tommy Dorigo says it's time to circle the wagons. 6.48 to play in the first half. I'm out for Louisiana Tech with the score. DePaul, 23, and Louisiana Tech, 15. Out here, it's me alone against the course. But in the financial world, you need all the help you can get. You need the Payne Weber Army behind you. Even golf legends can use some financial backup. Payne Weber is ready to roll, putting all its resources at your command. We believe the quality of life just might depend on the quality of your financial services. Thank you, Payne Weber. Now that's the kind of army you want behind you. Gary Thompson back at the Rosemont Horizon, 6.48 remaining in the first half. DePaul has opened up an eight-point lead here in this game. Elsewhere, for the NCAA play, Pitt has knocked off Maris. Big in the second. Kentucky leading Ohio State by a dozen. And also in the second half, Syracuse a five-point leader over Georgia Southern. Louisiana Tech had to call a couple of early timeouts to slow the Demons down. Well, I think Tommy Joe Eagles, one of the things, he does not want to let this ball game get away early. And a lot of coaches like to save the timeouts, but you can lose the ball game early as well as losing it at the end without those timeouts. So I think he's done a good job trying to take control of this game. White can't get it to roll down, and the rebound comes to Edwards. Strickland with the ball now for DePaul. The Blue Demons can go up by 10. Comedy's triple team. The exclamation point. He was triple team. He's got away and slammed it in. Tomajis is just something else right now. He is really charged up for this game. He had three guys around him, and what strength he showed. Watch him here. He'll break out of the pack, takes it in strong, and he just goes up with some quickness and jams it down home. And he's got the crowd going wild. Look at here. Takes it away. Three guys in the middle, and again, and he is pumped. Tomajis with his 26th dunk of the season. He has scored 11 points. He is shooting to give DePaul an 11-point lead. Tech needs a hoop. Lewis with the ball. That's Lewis Cook. The Bulldogs. There's. They forced eight steals a game on the average, and there's another one for DePaul. Hillary, a nice job there, though, stopping Strickland. Went out, probably to the break situation, get down here for an easy shot. Golden missing, and Kelvin Lewis a rebound. Maurice Jackson. I was going to say, the thing that Louisiana Tech does not want to do, and that's come down and get impatient. Their game is a half-court game. They've got a lot of time. They're only 10 down here in the early part, or the latter part of this first half. They need to take the time, try and work the ball inside. Jackson missing. Terrence Green, a rebound. Great speed, Strickland. Oh, Strickland has that ability, a nice dude. Has that quickness, good pass. Demons getting out on the, on the fast break, and they're doing it because they're doing a great job on the defensive glass. Listen to this crowd. It'd be hard not to play motivated, wouldn't it? 
The ball hitting by 12. Godbold. The crowd silences. Godbold has eight. 27, 17. 440 remaining in the first half. This is the ball club. Not as big or as strong as last year, but quicker and faster. Well, Joey Meyer said before the season, the lineup, we can shoot the ball. We've got no one to rebound. In years past, we couldn't shoot, but we could rebound. The Louisiana Tech personal number 30, Lewis Cook, is first the team seven. The first foul the on Lewis Cook. Over Dogs over the limit now. So DePaul is in the bonus for the rest of the half. Four minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the first half. Strickland will go to the line. He is only a 59% free thrower, but he's been hot lately. That's right. He's made 27 out of his last three, 33, so he's really up that percentage just to get it to around that 60% mark. He's averaged 19 points a game over his last seven, and he shows no real effects of any flu at all. Well, the amazing thing about that free throw percentage, he's shooting 58-7 from the field. <laughs> Translation, he was really low about uh, a couple, three weeks ago. 12-point lead. For DePaul, Louisiana Tech trying to beat the pressure defense. And they do. Kelvin Lewis, one-on-one, -on -one, kicks it out to Maurice Jackson, off the glass. Jackson's off the bench with eight points, an offensive spark for Tommy Joe Eagle's team. 29-19. Blue Demons have had a lot of success going down inside, and there's Continuing to look for it. He had Golden posted up. There's a nice steal by Newton. Out to Lewis against Locks. First points of the game for Delvin Lewis. He averages eight. You know, he did a nice, excuse me, did a nice job right there. Looked like he was out of control a little bit going the basket. He held it up, got himself in control, and went for the basket and laid it up. Golden lost it. for three. Oh, and he has filled it up. Jackson has 11. Joey Meyer wants to call a timeout. We're going to hold it here on the horizon with 3.23 to fly. And Joey Meyer said, hey, we got to do something about this Maurice Jackson who's off the tech bench. It's a 29-24 game. Those threes can shoot you back into it quickly. I so mentioned before, he's 12 out of 28 from three-point range coming in. They're not a club that shoots the three-point shots that much. They're 74 out of 196 on the season, but he's done a nice job coming off the bench. So let's take another look here. You see the go penetration. Got the good hands in there by Newton. Gets the steal, lead pass right there. He got himself under control. Just picked his way in, back the defensive man off, and then laid it up off the glass. Good play by Calvin Lewis. The ball with a 17-game winning streak here in the horizon. And in the seven years since this building has opened, the Demons have won 105, and they've lost only nine games here. But Louisiana Tech proved this year, Gary, they can play on the road. They went on a 12-day road trip around the holidays. They won five of six. The only game they lost was the UNLV. Well, that's right. Uh, that's where they really kind of made their season. Uh, Tommy Joe Eagles, their coach, was telling me they went out and played UNLV, a tough ball game, a four-point ball game, and we mentioned the Florida West Classic. But it was that UNLV game when they really got the confidence that they could be a good ball club. They started out, I think it was one and three, which would make them, what, 21 and four for the remainder of the season. You mentioned one of those games out west. Byron Newton had a great game against his old coach, Andy Russo. All Newton did was score five points in the last eight seconds of the game. That had to be a real emotional game uh, playing against Washington. Of course, Andy Russo, the coach down in Louisiana Tech, done a great job. Had Carl Malone, the mailman, and, and that crew uh, two years ago that went to the Sweet 16. So that had to be a real emotional win to go out there and, and beat Andy Russo in that Washington club. So there are three minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the first half here. With DePaul leading 29-24. How many Joe Eagles? He said his lifelong ambition was to come back to the head coach at Louisiana Tech. Served as an assistant six years to Andy Russo. So the Demons need a hoop here to try and regain some momentum. That's Kevin Edwards. 
low feeding Damocles on the low block. He got Godbolt to leave his feet, and Godbolt commits the foul, and Damocles will go to the line. They've got Godbolt on Damocles. It's a mismatch as far as size. They're hoping that Godbolt can make up for it with speed. He's 210, a pretty strong kid. See him get it behind, but once he gets it down there low in the paint, he's tough to handle. That time, a little pump fake got the defensive man up off the ground. Off the ground. Kamajis has been in double figures in 45 of his last 50 games. He scored 12 here in this first half. For the Bulldogs, 34. And Eldon coming in, Bowman. Eldon Bowman. He's a 6'7 freshman from Grambling, Louisiana. Just down the road from Rustin. And Newton will go out. Kamajis has 13 to lead all scorers, and it's a seven-point Blue Demon lead. That's Lewis. Kamajis over the top, he fouled with Lewis Cook, and Kamajis is first. Big guy going for the steal. <laughs> the DePaul Comet foul, 35. Dallas Comet His first, the team six. You know, Jackson is off the bench for Louisiana Tech with three field goals. And uh, they only attempt six and a half three-point field goals a game. They like to pound it inside. But going the inside against Dallas Comet might be another story. You know, they've spread their offense here in the last few minutes. Quit trying to really pound the, the ball inside. How they're going to go against the Blue Demons? No Andy Locks. The DePaul coming by 14. Andy Locks is first the team seven. So Blue Demons now we're in the bonus the at both ends of the floor. And on the line is Byron Newton. They call him Big Fig. Bigger than 6'4", 190 to be. He's really put together. Get the rebound, the free throw, and Grundy gets the rebound. Newton, by the way, has not scored. Neither has Lewis Cook for Louisiana Tech. And, and Cook is the man that, of the two, they really need the offense out of down inside. Strickland knows. Comedy's a rebound. Block. Foul inside against Louisiana Tech. Going to go against Eldon Bowman, who just came into the game. The Bulldogs personal 34, Eldon Bulldogs Bowman. just cannot handle comedies down inside. He's too active, too strong. Very few teams have. <laughs> That's right. Watch him here. Inside position. Bowman coming right over the top. Goes up. Gets him again. Comedies will be on the line. Comedies from Roman Catholic High School in Philadelphia. Ray Meyer went to see him as a high schooler. It was the first time Ray ever did that. Left the city of Chicago. That's how much a high, highly coveted Comagees was. Well, he picked a good one to go after for the first time. <laughs> Here in Chicago, you do not have to go very far. A lot of talent in the Chicago area. Cook's first field goal. Yeah, there was a time when Ray Meyer's recruiting budget was just subway tokens. Five-point lead to Paul and off the ball. Lauch has been whistled for a foul. His second in quick succession. In the ball blocking foul, 14. And he his second. 155 remaining in the first half. Tommy Joe Eagles looks on here. His team down by five. The chance to narrow the margin. For the Bulldogs, 30 Eagles has to be happy here with the Bulldogs, I think. They've really fought back, come back strong. Uh, as you mentioned, they're a team that has a lot of confidence. Playing here at the horizon, a lot of other teams might have folded here in the early going after dropping behind 10, 11 points. So they battled back, got it back to four, chance to cut it to three. And they do. 31, 28. And a little bit of a pressure defense. Strickland has been fouled by Kelvin Lewis. First foul of the game on Lewis. The Bulldogs personal, number 20, Kelvin Lewis. That'll put Strickland on the line for one and one. For DePaul, Rod Strickland, 
one end the bonus. Bonus, guys. DePaul had a 12-point lead in this game, 27-15. Tech has battled back here in the closing minutes of the first half. Really been a two-man scoring show for DePaul. Strickland a dozen, Kamaji's 13. Rod Strickland has found the answer with a free throw. <laughs> Five-point lead to Paul. Tech with the ball. 145 a minute. The ball hasn't pressed that much, really, uh, with the traps and so forth. Again, uh, we'll get a foul inside. And it's going to go against the Bulldogs. I believe it's both Eldon Bowman. The Bulldogs pushing foul. Yeah, that will be Bowman. Bowman his second. Second foul. And it means we'll walk it down for some DePaul free throws. The DePaul has a ball club. They've really shot free throws poorly. 67% of the year, but they've been 79% the last four games. You know, for the year, they've shot 229 more free throws in the opposition. And there's one of the reasons why Dallas Connolly is downside. But you know, the other guy that goes to the line a lot is Rod Strickland because he has the great ability to penetrate. He shot about 161 free throws on the season. Connolly is now is around the 200 mark. Kamaji has 15, and DePaul has its seven-point lead. Kelvin Lewis looking over to the bench, looking to find out what Coach Eagles wanted to run. Lewis in the corner, out front to Kelvin Lewis. Pass. Yeah. Offensive basket interference. That won't count. No passing. That looked like a good call. Get a chance to see it. Here's Bowman going up. Gets away from Kamaji's, forcing him back. But you see there, definitely a good call. Ball in the cylinder. Basket interference. So Strickland controlling for DePaul. That's Grundy. Leaves it for Locks. Edwards shooting three. No. Rebound, Alvin Lewis. Good athletes on this Louisiana Tech Club. Maurice Jackson in the corner. Shoot a three, but he walked. Traveling by a Tried to have a little rhythm ball. step, and uh, he was caught. Turnover is hurting the Bulldogs right now. They cut it down to three, 31 to 28. Then they get the offensive foul, put comedies on the line on the other end. Now a walk. Just whenever they make a run, they, something happens, and... The ball, of course, has made him pay for it each time. That's the big clock, and the shot clock is off. So the Demons will attempt to take the final shot here in the first half. Edwards looking for Strickland. Little room, clears it to Locks. And Strickland's going to reset. That's Thomas Hughes. Oh, Grundy. He wasn't ready for it. A good save. Edwards from long range. Oh, that's pulling one out of the bag. Just like Joey Meyer diagram. <laughs> Edwards gets the hoop as the two teams head to the locker room at halftime. DePaul in command of the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Your halftime score from the Rosemont Horizon. DePaul 37, Louisiana Tech 28. This is an NCAA Productions telecast. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of jobs. Jobs in management, jobs in sales, jobs in almost every profession. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly lists hundreds of high-paying jobs all across the country. So relax. Looking for a better job? Every week, the National Business Employment Weekly has articles on job interviewing, writing a better resume, and how to succeed once you get the job. So relax. Pick up the National Business Employment Weekly at a newsstand or call 800-372-3000 and receive eight issues by first-class mail for only $35. 800-372-3000. The National Business Employment Weekly. Don't make a career move without it. I like to have a good time, just like everyone else. But let me tell you one thing. Drugs and alcohol just aren't part of my good time. I have too much going for me to let drugs get in the way. And alcohol, 
I can live without it. I like to be in control. And drugs are just a waste of time. Don't throw your life away on drugs. Say no. After all, you can't be a hit when you're high. Something to think about from the NCAA. It's the baseball playing Ripkins, Cal Sr., Jr., and Bill. Hi, I'm Chris Fowler. We'll talk about the Ripkins baseball beginnings on this week's ESPN Scholastic Sports America, Saturday. The Paul Blue Demons with a 37-28 lead over the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Nick Hubert, along with Gary Thompson, we're at halftime of the Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, where DePaul is in command by nine. Well, they've done a good job in the first half. Of course, the big guy, the comedy's down inside. They've been real successful getting the ball to him. And he just came out playing like a man possessed. He was terrific, I thought, in that first half. Got the supporting help from Strickland offensively. Strickland has also done a good job. DePaul built its largest lead at 27-15. Tommy Joe Eagles had to call two timeouts to try and slow down the Blue Demons. And perhaps he did because the team got back in the game. Well, they got it back. We mentioned they cut it down to three. Then they had an offensive foul and a turnover. And that hurt them and got this lead back. Of course, then we had that basket right at the end of the half. Two things that are interesting about the Louisiana Tech team. One, Lewis Cook not scoring too much in this first half. Well, as we said, Cook has not been scoring the last few ball games. They need offense out of him and need some more offense out of White. Jackson came off the bench and really gave support, so he picked up some of that slack. So his halftime score, that is the DePaul Blue Demons on top of the score of 27 to 37 to 28. DePaul was trying to get the last second shot, and, and, and they did get the last second shot as it turned out. Well, it wasn't quite the way they diagrammed it. They made some good plays here. Good hands, a good save. The ball bounces off right here. Back in the hand, you see the clock, three seconds. The ball swishes, and that really deflates the opponent right there, Louisiana Tech, to see that one go down. And what it did then was give the ball a 37-28 lead, a nine-point margin, as the two teams are in their locker rooms talking over the second-half strategy. We'll continue from Rosemont Horizon and have more following these messages with the ball leading 37-28. I love the good life, the excitement, and I love VIP treatment, so you come here, take a look. This player's club card saves you big at some of the finest resorts of the world. Atlantic City, Las Vegas, Reno, Lake Tahoe, the Caribbean, and there are no strings attached. You can stay in one hotel, see a show in another, and dine in still another. Like here at Resorts International in Atlantic City. Player's Club makes saving money easy. I kept track, and we saved over $200 this weekend. As a member of the Players Club, you can kiss those long registration and show lines goodbye. We got right in on the VIP line and saved $30 in tickets. Players Club operators are waiting. Call right now, and you'll get information about a special deal. Two round-trip Super Saver airfares, two complimentary room nights in Atlantic City or Las Vegas with a membership in Players Club. You can't beat the deal, so call now. No one really knows how your skin got sensitive. But if it is, try the shave cream with more advanced lubricants than any other. New Gillette Foamy for sensitive skin. At UPS, it was never our intention to become a tourist attraction. But every year, scores of efficiency-minded Japanese businessmen show up and ask to tour our facilities. You see, UPS is so efficient, we can deliver next day air usually for half what other companies charge. Which is why so many Japanese find UPS the most rewarding package tour anywhere. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Sunday, a preview of Olympic competition. The men's super giant slalom in Calgary promises breathtaking performances at the site of the 88 Winter Games. World Cup skiing, Sunday on ESPN. Back at the Rosemont Horizon in Rosemont, Illinois, with the DePaul Blue Demons leading Louisiana Tech with a score of 37-28. This is Mick Hubert, and I'm joined now by Mr. Dick Schultz, who is the athletic director at the University of Virginia, also serving as the men's basketball committee. And Dick, we're getting down to the final game now here in this first round, and uh, as it is every year, it's been awfully exciting, these first round games. It really is. You get to single elimination basketball where it's all on the line on one night, and it really is exciting. There just isn't anything that matches it. 
everybody is on the go and perhaps uh, no one more than you you were in Salt Lake City last night in Chicago here tonight I have to admit after two straight days of uh, first round games I'm getting a little bit weary after three and a half hours sleep but it's a lot of fun there have been some great games and a lot more to come well, Dick not only tonight or this weekend but you really got to be going on adrenaline because you had a pretty action packed weekend last weekend down in Kansas City well the selection weekend is always a tough one it's, it's three days of hard work and uh, a lot of laborious uh, deliberations on the teams. It's a tough job, but I think the committee is very objective and is as fair as they possibly can be. And the first round games have been great, so uh, we have picked some good ball clubs. It's time consuming, but Dick, it's really got to be a labor of love for you. It really is. You know, I was a basketball coach for 25 years, and most of the people on the committee have rich basketball backgrounds. So it really does become a labor of love. And to see this tournament grow into one of the great spectacles uh, athletically uh, that now compares with the Super Bowl and World Series and in some cases even rates a little bit higher. So we're really pleased with what's happening. It's just unbelievable. And of course, you mentioned the expansion where the final four sites in the future are going to be big domes and it looks like the people are going to fill them up too. Well, you know, we've had uh, at Dallas last year, we only had 3,500 seats for the public and 140,000 single seat applications. We had more at, uh, at New Orleans this year, but still over 140,000 individual seat applications. So the, the interest is fantastic. So Dick, you and your nine members, Division One Basketball Committee, do an outstanding job, and we're just so thankful to be a part of the program. Well, the universities and the teams are what makes it great. Dick Schultz, the athletic director of the University of Virginia, and on the men's basketball selection committee, been gracious enough to spend a little time visiting with us here at the Rosemont Horizon, and we thank him for that. 37-28, the ball leads by nine, and we'll return in just a moment. When I was at Rutgers, the other guard was Jim Valvano, the North Carolina State coach, who to put it one way, is a little zany. We were playing against Delaware, down by one, with just about two seconds to go. I went up to the free throw line, made one shot of a two-shot free throw. Score was tied, went into overtime. Went into overtime, got the same situation, down by one, with a one and one. Jimmy comes up and instead of patting me on the back and telling me you can do it, says, you got us into it, now you get us out of it. Being named to the All-American team let me know I could do almost anything. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Alvin Hayes, Wesley Unseld, and Jimmy Walker, uh, I feel good about being the fifth member of that team. If a 6-1 slow guard can do it, along with some of those great players, you sort of can set your sights really high. The athletics for me let me pick and choose between 50 or 60 schools and let me pick one as good as Rutgers University. I would have gone, but maybe not to a school as good as Rutgers. This message furnished by the NCAA. It's the same association that gave World Be Free, Willis Reed, and Jack Sigma their start. The National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. See the current NAIA stars live Monday on ESPN. It's important to me to be in control. And I want control over my IRA. To move in and out of my investments as I think best. That's why I have my IRA at Charles Schwab, the discount broker. At Schwab, I can move freely from one investment to another. I can buy stocks, zero coupon bonds, or I can move my money into a money market fund or mutual funds. I can buy what I think looks good and sell what I don't want. I like knowing I can switch investments at any time, as often as I like, and never pay a penalty. In fact, the Charles Schwab IRA doesn't have any fees. No setup, no maintenance, no penalty fees. I'd recommend the Charles Schwab IRA. To get your free booklet on the one IRA for all your investment needs, call now, 800-225-2800. That's 800-225-2800 for your free Schwab IRA booklet. The ball leading Louisiana Tech 37-28, and here at halftime, I'm joined now by the athletic directors at these two fine institutions. And we're going to talk first with Paul Miller, who is the athletic director at the Louisiana Tech University. And I'll tell you what, basketball in the Deep South and Louisiana Tech is awfully good. The, the team has been here three times in the last four years in the NCAA. Yeah, we're very excited about the programs we have, not in women's uh, basketball and also our men's program. 
Uh, Tommy Joe Eagle is one of the finest coaches I've been around, and he gets a lot out of the players. And as you can see, uh, not shooting very well. We're still in the ball game, uh, so I look for a, 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 an interesting second half. Tech has played awfully well this season, as evidenced by a 22 and 7 record. And basketball fans don't ask a Louisiana who anymore when they're talking about the school down in Ruston, Louisiana. Well, that's true. You know, we've uh, we got Carl Malone out there. Uh, in the pros working for us and uh, they've done a real good job and uh, our university our president has made a commitment to athletics along with academics our facilities are fine so we'll be able to recruit the type of athlete that we want because we do have the facilities we can bring them to well thanks for the visit also joining us is the athletic director at DePaul Bill Bradshaw wearing two hats of course is also the, the host school here I know you're been awfully busy this week in coordinating this tournament our staff has really run on adrenaline this week and they're all excited we don't need much sleep and this is all worth it when you see a crowd like this in games like we've had today Bill, I don't imagine you got any calls this week for any tickets, did you? None at all. Nobody <laughs> wants tickets, and I was very happy to tell anyone who did call that we didn't have any. <laughs> of course, the ball has been a fixture of the NCAA. What an outstanding record. Joey Meyer has really taken over for Coach Ray, and he's done an outstanding job. We lost four seniors last year, three of them drafted in the NBA, and just nobody figured that we could have a season like this, 26-2, and two, and you just could not have predicted it. I guess when the Chicago... Uh, Bears kind of dropped out of the picture. People started getting on the DePaul bandwagon. You did sneak up on people a little bit. Well, we were 10 and 0 before the Bears season ended, so we did it very quietly. We're very grateful to the Bears for having such a great year and allowing us to build up that record without them. So we did have the benefit of that, and uh, Chicago fans did come out and see us when they had to. Bill, thanks for the time, doing a super job, and uh, good luck. Thank you. I hope to see you a lot in the next couple weeks. Bill Bradshaw, the athletic director of the DePaul University Blue Devils. We're at halftime, 37-28, DePaul by nine. We'll return. This is an NCAA production telecast. This is the place you come to for everything you're looking for. This is the place that lends a helping hand. The place for Ace Best Buys, like AstroTurf doormats for $2.99. Ace is the place. Ace Five Star Latex Wall Paint for just $5.97 a gallon. Or four paint roller refills for $1.97 a pack. Ace is the place. With the help of Hardware Yes, yes, yes. The big news is that I've made some very important big deals. Sir, excuse me. But there's one big deal you haven't made. Yeah, right. Yeah. You see, I'm uh, talking about a deal on Sports Illustrated. Oh, Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated? Yeah. A savings of fifty percent off the cover price. Wow. Twenty-seven action-packed weeks for three installments of just nine seventy-nine each. Wow. Kid, you're a hit. Hit. What about free videotape? The NFL Crunch Course. It's forty-three minutes of the NFL's greatest hits. It makes a smashing gift, and it's free with your paid subscription. Three. Plus, you get their 87 baseball preview with schedule and their famous swimsuit issue. Major League! Just call their toll-free number. You can even use your credit card. That's right. Get the savings, the schedule, the special issues, and the free crunch force tape. That's the big news. Any questions, gentlemen? Where are the phones? Uh, and that'll be all. Sports Illustrated. Get the feeling. Call now. 1-800-525-5700. ESPN comes out swinging. Play ball with live Monday night college baseball. Powerhouse slugers from Texas, Miami, defending national champion Arizona and other schools provide hard-hitting excitement. ESPN gives you a box seat view with award-winning coverage. It all leads to ESPN's exclusive live presentation of the College World Series. Live Monday night college baseball, only on ESPN. A second half of basketball awaiting these two teams. DePaul with a nine-point lead, and they're shooting 59% from the floor. And Louisiana Tech, uh, Gary, shooting some, uh, they're shooting poorly here in this first half. Well, I think Coach Eagles and the Bulldogs had to feel pretty good, the fact that DePaul's shooting 59%. They're really, I think, at about 40%. We've got 31 up there. Officially, they're at 40. But to be only down nine, uh, the one thing that DePaul let uh, Louisiana Tech stay in this ball game in the first half was on the foul line. They only converted 10 out of 17. Comedies, as good as he was with 15 points, was only 5 out of 11 from the free throw strike. Two interesting points about Louisiana Tech. Cook is 1 for 7. White 1 for 5. That's 2 for 12 from their big guys. And we said that they lived inside. Right. They're double-figure scorers. And I mentioned before that White and Cook have to give them some offense. 
points, although Maurice Jackson, Mo Jackson came in and he kind of lit it up for 11 points, so that took some of the pressure you see there, Jackson with 11. And Godbolt with eight, White three, Cook Lewis and Goldman all with two, and nobody has more than two fouls for Louisiana Tech, so that's not really a fact at this point. The ball has only four fouls, Grundy has those two. But the two scorers, Namajee's 15, Strickland 13, Edwards has chipped in six, Grundy has a pair, and Golden has one. So the hometown, the Paul Blue Demons looking for their 27th victory, but the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs will have a lot to say about that one. Tech 22 and seven, DePaul is 26 and two. DePaul opened a 27-15 lead by 12, a couple of Tommy Joe Eagles timeouts in the first half, got his ball club regrouped, and they came back thanks to some long distance shooting from Maurice Jackson, who has 11 points, and it's a, it was a, a closer game, but 31-28, but then DePaul scored the final six points of the first half, and the Blue Demons will have the ball here to start half number two. Nick Hubert along with Gary Thompson. The Rosebrown Horizon settle back and enjoy this second half. Another Blue Demon turnover, and that for DePaul is their 13th. That was the area we were talking about. Louisiana Tech was going to have to control. We talked about Calvin Lewis. He had a good first half controlling the ball, had only one turnover. That's Lewis to the right side. Byron Newton. Bulldogs at first possession came out man for man. It looked like they're going to be aggressive and pick up the tempo on defense. Cook misses. Rebound, Randy White. He's fouled. Cook now is one for eight from the floor, but White helped him up with an offensive board at that time. The foul is on DePaul. First foul of the game on Golden. On the line is Randy White. White has scored three points tonight. He's a 67% free throw shooter. We're talking about his scoring. He's been in double figures 12 of the last 13 games, including in those 12 games were four 20-point games. So he certainly has the ability to score. He's got to do it here in the second half for the Bulldogs. 6'8", sophomore from Shreveport. He'll start at 59 of 63 games. So White now has five. The seven-point lead for the ball. Coming out with pressure, man-to-man, full-court pressure. Namaji. He's got 17. Likes that little baseline jumper. I said the only place that he was deficient in, in that first half really was on that foul line. Lewis Cook leaves it for Godbolt. Godbolt scored the first six tech points, has two cents. There's a foul on Comages. So you've got White and Cook not scoring. And after Godbolt got his points early, they really shut him down also. Certainly did. It's a good defensive club. Uh, the ball here, you see him come up. Comages comes across. He had. His blocks, and good blocks in the first half. Here he can't get it. Sends Randy White back to the free throw line. White three of four tonight from the stripe. Six in the game for White. White has had five games when he's been in double figures and in double figure rebounds. Fans counting each time he bounces the ball, trying to unnerve him, doesn't do any good. 39-32 to Paul by seven. Trap press, got the turnover. Here's Cook, pull up jumper. Oh, Cook's having a rough night in the floor. Godbolt put it up and counted a foul on to Paul. Godbolt, Godbolt went to the glass and got the hoop. Bulldogs just will not quit, they keep coming back. They were nine down, they got it back to five. Now Godbolt down inside. Comes the cookie man up. He's having tough luck on the board, but Godbolt inside. A pump fake gets his man up in the air. Golden looks like on the foul. Gets the bucket down. He'll have a chance to convert the three-pointer. And if he hits it, it will have been a five-point run here for Louisiana Tech, and they will trail only four if, in fact, Godbolt, a 71% free thrower, can convert. Godbolt's been in double figures now, 11 straight games. 27 times on the year. Five-point lead for DePaul. And the crowd now is starting to root the Blue Demons on. They want to see some DePaul scoring here. 
Lewis almost had that, that ball again. He's really, their defense is really aggressive here. They're coming after him defensively. Strickland, the magician with the ball. Good ball handling, good ball control by Strickland. 18 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the second half. Apologies. Apologies has 19 points in the game, and he has hit seven of eight shots. Shooting 52% on the air from the field, but he's got it going tonight. Scott Bolt kicks it out to Newton. Lewis. Tech really not passing quick enough. They're not reversing the ball quick enough against that zone. There's Jackson, finally got the ball on the left side. Going to be the Paul Ball. Tommy Joe Eagle says, no, we wanted it, but I think two of the Tech players touched it, and Joey Myers' team will have the ball. There's Strickland, a walking dribble. Across the timeline. Shot, probably not the shot that Joey Meyer wanted right there. The ball playing with a three guard, really, with Green a guard. Uh, offense, a 3 2 set. Rod Gold missing, but the Tech Bulldogs will have another possession. Rod Gold had a shot, but tried to get it to White. It went off a foot of the ball player, and the Blue Demons get the ball. Strickland scores. Nice job, a nice pass by Kevin Edwards that time. Back to Strickland, that made the play. Nine-point lead for DePaul. That's what they let by at halftime. Big offensive possession now for Tech. And the Demons, uh, great at converting turnovers into points. We saw that graphic earlier in the first half, what they were doing. There they convert another one. White. Oh, another turnover. Every time they seem to get a position to come back on DePaul, they make some turnovers, and DePaul counters and hurts them off of those turnovers. DePaul has the ball in a nine-point lead. 16 and a half minutes remaining. 16,000 strong in the Rosemont Horizon. Edwards. He's got eight. And Edwards a good outside shooter. 11-point lead. Crowd really going wild now. They're really up. It's a deafening roar here on the horizon. Tough job for the Bulldogs. They have to come in here and play this club here in the horizon. Anytime you got to go on the home court. White has been fouled inside. Looks Edwards' foul is his first. That's the fourth team foul. And White is on the line. He has shot four free throws second half, made all four. Five of six in the game. And he was the young man they brought in as a freshman who's supposed to replace the mailman. We talked about Carl Malone. And he had a good freshman uh, season. He started uh, 31 of 34 games. So even though he's a sophomore, he's a real veteran as a sophomore player. Takes about nine and a half seconds of that ten. Eight points white. Ten point lead to Paul. Green, a trap. Oh, Busca, look out. So close out front. Almost had the steal, didn't get it. Ends up easy two and a stuff by Comagees. Comagees now has scored 21. Well, his career high, start looking at that. He's a ways away from that yet, but certainly within reach. That's 33 against Georgia Tech. Largest lead of the game for DePaul, 47-35. Up by a dozen are the Demons. Lewis, three-pointer. Godbolt's got to go up from there. He does. Tommy Eagle says, hey, he was hammered inside, but there's no whistle. And instead, Godbolt does get the hoop. Good recovery there by Godbolt. Had the ball knocked away, was able to come down, get it, and take it up strong. He's a strong, strong player inside. 6'5", 210 is Godbolt. 
Strickland down the lane. Whistle. Oh, look at that shot. It'll count. And terrific play, and he puts that ball up high, and Arch, nobody's going to get to it on the block. Watch Strickland. Little change up here. Nick between the legs, down in, comes in, gets bodied, and look at him. Just take that ball, toss it up, rainbow Four shot, count it. Wyoming, which upset Virginia, and at four, it'll be Alabama meeting New Orleans. Right, no, right now, though, we have uh, bonus coverage for you. Second round already underway at Indianapolis, a matchup between Auburn and the top seed there in the Midwest, Indiana. Hoosiers leading at 94 to 82 with 232 to go in that ball game. Early, though, it was Auburn leading by as much as 14 in the first half, James. Hard to believe that a Bobby Knight coach team came out flat in the first half. They had to get emotionally up, and what did it? This is the second of two physical confrontations between these two teams. Daryl Thomas of Indiana and the white Jeff Moore, number 40 for Auburn. They're talking street language to each other. Indiana rose to the challenge, and Steve Alford has been on fire from the outside. 17 second-half points. They're looking good. All right. Even Bobby Knight and Sonny Smith exchanged words in the first half. But Steve Alford, virtuoso performance, 31 points, 7 out of 10 from three-point range, and the Hoosiers lead by 12, 232 to go in that game. Let's take you right now to the Hoosier Dome, Brent Musburger and Billy Packer. We would like to welcome those of you along the Pacific Network who have just joined us. I'm Brent Musburger along with Billy Packer. We have 2.32 to go. Indiana leading Auburn 94-82. Indiana was down by 14 in the early moments of this game. gambling on defense now has spread the floor and Alford has been picking them clean. Now what Bob Knight is saying is that referee is keep the hands off Alford and he wants him on that foul line. To come out and get the ball. They'd like to have him on that foul line. They're not going to give it up. They're down to 10 seconds. Callaway. Isle with a strong offensive rebound and he traveled as he crashed to the floor. Make a good effort by Isle. And for those of you who just joined us, take a look at our game, a summary. 47 points from the backcourt. Alford and Smart. Indiana shot 60% from the field. Held Auburn to 42%. 31 for Alford and Smart. A new Indiana single-game assist record here this afternoon. Team with a chance to go all the way. Jones hits a three-pointer for Auburn. They've got to be thinking three points all the way. They go and follow Callaway right away. I was surprised they went inside the last time. Jones has had quite a ball game. You know what, Brent? Well, you would look back to the early moments of the second half. That's when this game was won by Indiana. Yeah, they came out and played very solid in the second half. I thought they started very lethargically in this ball game, which really surprised me. The crowd was quiet, and Indiana did not come out with a lot of fire, but there were a few fouls were called early there in the first half, got them to the line, and really got them started. When Auburn had to go to that bench early, it cost them greatly. Well, what do you give Knight for coaching uh, his grade here this afternoon? Well, I'm not into, I'm, give no, I'm not into grade come coaches on. at all, but I'll tell you one thing about the man. He has won 75% of the games he's coached in the Big Ten, and he is now the number three guy. And by next year, I will probably be the all give him a B rather than an A. No, 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 I don't get into that. Guys that get this far deserve all A's. <laughs> You're being too nice. No, no. for two shots there, but obviously it was not a player going for the ball. Yeah, there's a reminder of what we got coming up second. Jerry Tarkanian and the running Rebels up against Kansas State. Any of you will see that? How about Digger Phelps and Notre Dame? Can they handle TCU? Probably the best team out of the Southwest Conference. There's 17 points. Sonny Smith took his team to a regional final last year before all losing to eventual national champion Louisville, you know, the only coach at Auburn ever to take a team to the NCAA tournament. Martin, it's over here. here they come. For Indiana, it's win the game. Don't try to do things spectacular.
They have to put somebody on the line. Score the basket. Indiana will advance to the regional next Thursday night in Cincinnati, where Knight and the Hoosiers will take on the winner of the Duke Xavier game. Well, that could possibly bring up a matchup between coach and pupil. So I'm reminded that they will play Friday in Cincinnati. We like to have those seniors come tournament time. Thomas Alford. Then that nice blend of the junior college. Smart coming in there. And Garrett. Three by White. This Auburn team looked very good today, and it shows you how good the SEC is. They came in fifth place in that league. Oh, beauty. Ohio State and you knew he was a special player in regard to the great leaping ability and skills he has. So offensive very solid player. Number 10, smart lead. That brought a smile to Bob Knight. They played a good game. Great game. When you have one guard with over 30, the other guard with a single game assist record for Indiana. amazing to me about Smart and Garrett is the fact that Bob Knight runs a very complicated system and to come in from junior college to be able to assimilate in that system so quickly is really amazing. Swatted away, goal 10 in at this end. Ryan Sloan, 45, the son of former NBA star and coach Jerry Sloan. <laughs> he wanted to get into stats but not on the other team's scorecard. We'll win this one. And Bob Knight moves a step closer to a third national championship. It was tough in the early moments. They were down by 14. Indiana was 24 to 10. And then they outscored Auburn at 43 to 24. So coming up next, Jim Nance will set the table for the rest of the afternoon. And we'll be right back with the general in a moment. While some still believe you can't take it with you, those who've driven the new Mitsubishi wagon know just the opposite to be true. Yes, yes, yes. 
Now not only can you take it with you, but you can do so with a remarkable combination of style, spacious comfort, and versatility. The new Mitsubishi Wagon, patiently crafted so you can take it all with you. Or better yet, so you can leave it all behind. Mitsubishi. Here's why these New England fishermen take Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. When I catch a cold, it's a tough one, and the only thing that seems to help me is Alka-Seltzer Plus. I get aches and pains, runny nose, nasally, and Alka-Seltzer Plus works every time. When I get a cold, my head feels like it's three feet thick. Alka-Seltzer Plus helps break through, helps me get back on my feet. Alka-Seltzer Plus cold medicine. Fast, effective relief for tough winter colds. In a word, it works. U.S. Sprint keeps building, not just a link or a few lines of fiber optics, but the first and only 100% fiber optic network clear across America. With more fiber optic cable in place right now than AT&T. So U.S. Sprint can keep giving you the best overall savings and give you the clearest connections in long distance. Call U.S. Sprint, builders of the first and only 100% fiber optic network clear across America. So Indiana becomes the first team to advance to the Sweet 16, a 17-point victory over Auburn. The Chevy MVPs, Mike Jones, 30 points for the Tigers. And how about Steve Alford today, 31 points for the Hoosiers. Coming up next, you'll see the Notre Dame against TCU or Kansas State against UNLV. In about a half an hour, those of you in Ohio and the ACC region will see Xavier against Duke. The road to the Final Four continues on CBS Sports right after this. I don't know. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'd go to college. Me yeah. too. If I had the money. Yeah. So what are you going to do? I don't know. What are you going to do? You don't want those fries. <laughs> what are you going to do, Jack? Eat your way to college? <laughs> yeah, really? I'm going to college on the new GI Bill. You serve full-time in the armed forces or part-time in the reserves, and you earn a lot of money for tuition. The new GI Bill. Are you using that pickle? Now for young men and women in the armed forces, it's a great place to start. See your local recruiter. Мы в последних секундах 310 игр статуя Liberty. It's almost over, and the Russians are winning the 310th annual Statue of Liberty Challenge. Bad news for the Americans who kept the statue home for the last 74 years. Wait! The Americans have got position! Take off and take Ingo and tag out! What a comeback! I've never seen anything like it! We may keep the statue home after all! It's a miracle! Only two players left! Grant, Borisovich, Borisovich and Grant! It's one-on-one! -on -one. Laser tag. Practice hard, America. When investors wanted to reduce the high risk in high tech, Prudential Beige created Prutech 1 and 2. This has real potential. Select portfolios built on identifying promising products and companies on the leading edge of scientific frontiers. This new process is incredible. A first of its kind for the personal investor and a way to share in the growth available through technologies. All right, let's go. If anyone can show you a more advanced approach towards new and better ways to make money, it's Prudential Beige. Rock solid, market wise. All right, coming up next, we're going to take mo most of you to Salt Lake City, where number one in the West, UNLV, will take on Kansas State, while others will go to Charlotte, TCU, and Notre Dame. All of that will happen here on the road to the Final Four after this message and a word from your local stations. Nissan announces the best deal ever on this 87 hard body truck. A $630 value plus package with top custom bumper. Sliding rear window. Dual outside mirrors. And a lot more at no extra charge. Then add in our 3.9% factory sponsored financing. Depending on the model you choose and length of contract, you could save over $1,400. That's a ton of money. And a lot of truck. So hurry down to your Nissan dealer now and drive home our best deal ever. Turn it on, big boy. Turn on that energy from 100% whole wheat. That Wheaties energy. Go tell it's all out good whole wheat. Now go tell your mama what the big boys eat. Who has the sight and sound experience? You must experience. Who? RCA. With digital command component systems. If you settle for less than RCA, that's exactly what you'll get. 
United's cut fares from coast to coast. Fly for just $29 to $99 to more cities than any other airline, with as little as two days advance purchase. You're not just flying, you're flying in the friendly skies. Katarina Vitt. She has worn Olympic gold and captured two world championships. Her athletic artistry placed her at the pinnacle of her sport until last year when a... Coast. Tonight, they will once again vie for the world crown and in the process, raise sport to art. It is beauty at its best. The World Figure Skating Championships, tonight on CBS Sports. This is CBS. It really bothers me when I can't get what I want from my family because we can't meet certain credit requirements. But at RTO, we get just what we want with no credit checks. I like the sound design audio video home entertainment system for only $22.25 a week. And we picked out a sofa loveseat grouping with tables and lamps for just $23.75 a week. If credit keeps you from getting what you want, then come to the original rent-to-own store, RTO. They'll make it work for you. An ordinary latch lock can be a pushover for a burglar, but not this lock. The quick set extra security deadlock with one inch deadbolt. Just the sight of one can make a burglar go somewhere else. Give your home the protection of a quick set deadlock. Available wherever good hardware is sold. From Quick Set, a division of Emhart Corporation. Available at Lampy Lumber in Tulare and Lampy True Value in Fresno. Center on the campus of the University of Utah in Salt Lake. For today, the second round game in the West Region between the top ranked UNLV Running Rebels against Kansas State of the Big Eight. Kansas State beating Georgia in overtime, UNLV over Idaho State. Later today in the second round, we'll have Wyoming going against UCLA. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with the coach, Hubie Brown. Hubie, everybody knows about the Running Rebels. They're ranked number one in the country, the leading scoring team in the country. But what about this unsung Kansas State team? Well, this is a team that's been overshadowed all year, Gary, by the glamour teams in the Big Eight. Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri. But in his first year, returning to his alma mater, Lon Kruger, 20 big wins. And more important, four of his six players new to the program. I call that a masterful job of coaching. The first-year coach against the veteran Jerry Tarkanian in his 14th year. He's trying to take UNLV to the Final Four for the first time in 10 years. Hubie, I mentioned the Rebels are a high-scoring team, but Kansas State scoring around 80 points a game. Both of them have excellent three-point shooters. Mitch Richmond for Kansas State, Freddie Banks for UNLV. Well, Banks will get his in there, frantic style of play to hurry up offense. He's already scored 126 threes compared to all of the opponents that they've played this year, 120. Staggering stat. Richmond will get his in there half-court game, Gary. You, be, you feel that the way Kansas State handles this pressure is the key to the game. Well, absolutely. Anytime that you're double or triple team, when you break the press, you must make them pay by attacking the basket on the two-on-one, three-on-two situations. What about size? Kansas State's tallest starter is six foot seven. Yeah, well, they're giving away a lot of height, but they've done that all year long. And when we say sometimes it's the size of the heart and the dog, not the size of the people. I like that. UNLV against Kansas State. Second round game. The winner to move on to Seattle. We'll be back with the introduction of the starting lineups in just a moment. CBS Sports presents the NCAA Basketball Championship. Today's second round game from Salt Lake City is sponsored by Isuzu Quality Cars and Trucks, the first car builders of Japan. Budweiser, the genuine article, Beachwood Age, for that clean, crisp taste, this Bud's for you. And by U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. You're listening to Children of Japan. This joyous and beautiful sound comes to you from Delta Airlines, because Delta is flying to Tokyo, gateway to the Orient. 
Come with us to a land steeped in tradition, yet as modern as tomorrow. We'll fly you to the gracious charm of the Far East with all the comfort of the familiar West. Delta to Japan. An investment firm is only as impressive as it is responsive. It's a go. So when interest rates fell, we looked for new ways for our clients to make money and developed unique opportunities like the Prudential Real Estate Investment Trust, a first of its kind in a way to take advantage of changing markets. While others may imitate it, we're busy surpassing it. If anyone can show you bold new thinking in the business of making money, let's close it. It's Prudential Beach, rock solid, market wise. Behold the Isuzu Pup, the lowest price truck in America. About $6. Buy a pup now and you can get 3.9% financing or 500 pounds of bananas. Why, I saved enough money to buy this island and all the fish. Penumeli, Kiki Bobo. Hurry, 3.9% financing or $500 rebate offer end soon. against the panoramic view of the Rocky Mountains, Salt Lake City, Utah, the site of the second round game. The statue of Brigham Young, the founder of the Mormon Church, and this is the special event center on the campus of the University of Utah, where today the top-ranked team in the country, Nevada, Las Vegas, with a 34-1 record, plays host to Kansas State, who has won 20 and lost 10, their first 20-win season in five years, and one of four teams from the Big 8 in the NCAA tournament. Now let's join the public address announcer, Mike Runge, for the introductions of the players. Here we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Special Events Center for this afternoon West Region second round game between the UNLV Rebels and the Kansas State Wildcats. Now let's meet the starting lineups for UNLV at forward, a 6'8 junior from Rain, Louisiana, number 23, Gerald Patio. For Kansas State at forward, a 6'5 junior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number 23, Mitch Richmond. For UNLV at forward, a 6'9 senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number 35, Armand Gilliam. For Kansas State at forward, a 6'5 sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, number 34, Lance Simmons. For UNLV at center, a 6'8 junior from Detroit, Michigan, number 44, Jarvis Bassnock. For Kansas State at center, a 6'7 junior from St. Louis, Missouri, number 32, Charles Bledsoe. For UNLV at guard, a six-foot senior from San Pedro, California, number 10, Mark Wade. For Kansas State at guard, a 5'11 senior from Memphis, Tennessee, number 11, Lynn Smith. For UNLV at guard, a 6'2 and a half senior from Las Vegas, Nevada, number 23, Freddie Max. For Kansas State at guard, a 6'1 freshman from McPherson, Kansas, number 12, Steve Henson. <laughs> Introducing the head coaches for UNLV in his 14th season, Jerry Tarkanian. And for Kansas State in his first season, Lon Kruger. two-time Big 8 Player of the Year when he played at Kansas State. Back with a tip-off in a moment. My world, I wish for more.
Day, celebrate with the only American beer that's also brewed and bottled in Ireland, Budweiser. My daddy goes to work real early. Morning, such a busy time of the day. And Mama and I have to hurry, but McDonald's is on the way. It's our favorite breakfast stop for the good breakfast sandwiches. Thanks, baby. UNLV against Kansas State. UNLV with a 34-1 record. Their only loss coming to Oklahoma in Norman. Kansas State, 20-10. and 10. They had a big win against Oklahoma in Norman. They took Kansas to two overtimes. The turnaround point of their season was when they beat Marquette in Milwaukee. The officials, the referee is James Burr, Paul Galvin, and John DeBrow. Three men in charge of this. The last meeting in 1985 between these two. As going up at the center circle will be Jarvis Bass Knight, number 44 in the white uniforms for UNLV, opposed by Lance Simmons, number 34 of K-State. This is Mark Wade, the brilliant playmaker for Jerry Tarkanian. He led the nation in assists, setting an NCAA record. Broken up nicely that time. Inside move defensively by Bledsoe. Bledsoe very active in that pivot spot. Well, this is a very quick defensive team. They'll switch on all crosses along the baseline. And, and I don't think an awful lot of people are thinking of Kansas State as that type of a club. And it comes to Armand Gilliam, the second team All-America, the PCAA Player of the Year. That's thrown away. It'll be Kansas State's basketball. And now here comes the pressure, and we'll know in a hurry, you'll be how Kansas State can handle it. Well, the main thing is that the two guards, once they break the pressure, the next play is the key. And there's a steal. Wade comes up. Bass Knight on the drive. And UNLV leads it 2 to nothing. Just got to take care of your knitting. Just take your time. They're using Richmond at the forward position to bring it up. Lance Simmons on the drive. Kicks it out to Henson. This is Lynn Smith, the senior out of Memphis. Simmons, who started the last four games for Kansas State. Henson, the freshman from McPherson, batted out of bounds. It'll be the Wildcats basketball. This is where Vegas is so tough. Not only do they have the athletic quickness, but they have the intensity to get after you with their hands. That game from Charlotte, you see Notre Dame leading TCU. Here comes Henson. Henson not able to get it. Rebound by Gillian. Six foot nine senior out of the Pittsburgh area. Played at Independence Junior College. From the corner, patio. See, that you can't let happen. Everybody talks about banks, but Patio has also taken over 193s himself. Well, he's been in a shooting slump the last six weeks, shooting only 30% that might get him on track. Simmons will bring it back out to Henson. Here is Smith. Smith has had some problems this year with an ankle injury in the midseason, has come back strong. See, Vegas is a team that is outstanding at taking away your number one strength offensively. They're going to make you go to your options. Last night, that time deflected it. Here's Freddie Banks had it deflected by Smith, but it's off of Banks. Kansas State will have it. Anytime that you're playing three-point shooters, you must stay at home with them. And, and that is so on Banks and Patio. More important, you must make them put the ball on the floor. You can't let them take that stand-up jump shot. This is Mitch Richmond, as you mentioned. He's handling the ball outside. Excellent three-point shooter, and he gets K-State on the scoreboard. Well, he's their money man. There's no doubt about it. Here the other evening, the young man put on a great display, scoring 24 points in the second half. A great game. The Rebels with a three-point lead. Inside, Gillian. Posts up on Bledsoe. Rebound by Henson. Here comes Henson. His dad was his high school coach in McPherson. Up it comes. Bledsoe. The leaner not there. And the rebound by Bass Knight. Well, he made that a tough shot, Gary. He just should have let, let the ball up with his left hand. Three-point attempt by Gerald Patio. Smith with the rebound. 5-2 the score. UNLV. Big decision now when the Rebels shoot quickly. When you get your rebound like Kansas State, do you push it up the floor and match their tempo, or do you take your time and do your knitting? 
That is going to stop play with a traveling call. I want to remind our viewers in the ACC and Ohio area that they'll be leaving us in a few minutes to see another game of special interest in their local areas. And you'll be kept up to date on the progress of this game with scouting reports and scoring reports and highlights. 5-2 UNLV, the turnover against Kansas State. Inside, Gillian. Broken up by Smith, but he reached in and committed the foul. See, that's so big. big in there. Well, he's big, and like Jerry Jarkanian said yesterday, Gary, that that he is the best big forward ever to play at Las Vegas for Jerry. Now, that's really making some statement because of the outstanding players. But that time, the defensive player got caught on the top side. Any time that you top side a player of that strength and the passer, if you do not jam the passer, he'll make that lob pass all day long, and we have to look for that. Gilliam at one time, believe it or not, was a wrestler in high school. Wanted to go to Clemson on a football scholarship, and fortunately for Jerry Tarkanian, he ended up playing basketball. Uh, upper body strength is outstanding. 6'9", 230-pounder from the Pittsburgh area. Averaging over 22 points a game. At a high of 36 in one game this year. 7-2, the Rebels. Off to Henson. Henson was the Kansas High School Player of the Year in his senior year at McPherson. Out it comes to Smith. That's Mitch Richmond. The foul is going to go on Patio. Patio leaning into him. That's his first foul. See, everyone wants to talk about Las Vegas, Gary, and say they're a running gun outfit. But during the course of the day, just watch the intensity and the pressure that they put on every shot that is taken. Now, that was the third jump shot taken so far in this ballgame where they got a piece of it. Unfortunately, they also got the body. But the pressure is there for you to score in my face. Well, they had those quick jumpers. Not only guys can go up, but they get up quickly. And that was evidence there. Out it comes to Simmons. Simmons into Mitch Richmond. Very strong. That time not able to get it. Rebound inside and blocked. Rejected that time. Simmons trying to follow. There's your three. Leader by Banks. Kicks outside and is chased down by Mark Wade. They get a lot of those long rebounds, don't they? Oh, that was a great play by Patio. And See, that's not, nice not able to come yeah. up with that one. Well, so Kansas State had that rebound, and Patio came from behind and tapped it out. So even when you're fast breaking down the play, they're very dangerous coming from the rear. UNLV having some mechanical problems, but still with a 7-2 lead. I like the release. Nice release. You got to bury it. And he did. And that would give him some confidence. Steve okay. Henson averaging over seven and a half points a game. Became a starter in the tenth game this year for Lon Kruger. Boy, Patio, he'll put it up from anywhere. You've got to really bring your defense out. Respect their range. Here he goes. Three-pointer. Inside position, Bass Knight rejected, but a foul is going to go on Bledsoe. Well, the Vegas guys up front are very strong, Gary. And when we talk about Bass Knight and Gilliam, they have a, a major size factor here. But when you can lay off of a player and say, I want you to score, that's what Kansas State is doing with Wade. They're laying off the point guard and saying, OK, you, you must show us that you can score. Now, what's the disadvantage of that? The disadvantage of that is, is that Wade is a great passer so that you can not front the low post plays. You do that, and he'll pick out those lob passes all day. He'll leave you by yourself. Norris Coleman is now checked in, number 44 for Kansas State, the all Big 8 performer. Many know the story about the sergeant from the Army, 25-year-old, who missed the games until January 10th, coming back, playing brilliantly at times, but not in the starting lineup. They've been bringing him off the bench, and Coleman in there now. Yeah, but he's their leading rebounder, their leading scorer, and like the other day, everyone's talking about he didn't have a great game. He had 11 rebounds. Kind of a quiet 11, wasn't it? Yes. So far, really, they're handling the press. They're doing a very nice job. Now, here comes a double. Here comes your double. Henson saw it, got rid of it, off to Smith. Henson, in the estimation of Lon Kruger, says we've thrown so much at him, and he handled so much of the pressure as a freshman. Baseline, block, and the foul will go on Bass Knight. Reaching in that time on Charles Bledsoe. Uh, they challenge every single shot. And when you go up, and that pressure is on you, their rotations are so quick behind the pressure that it's difficult for you to find a free man. That will be the key to them. Or they take, can they find a free guy, Gary? They take you out of the comfort zone, don't they? They never allow you to have a moment of peace out there. 
Well, yep. they're very well schooled, Gary, in, in the fact that they, they say they're going to take away your primary game and force you into making adjustments. Here is Gledsel. Gledsel, a 50% free throw shooter, but he got that one. He, along with Richmond, are transfers from Moberly Community College in Missouri. One of three junior college players that have really impacted this team in Lon Kruger's first year. 9-5 UNLV. Wade always forcing the issue. Desperation shot tipped up and in. Beautiful move by Bass Knight. That was, that was sensational because he came right down the middle of the floor. Henson gets it off. They're handling the pressure pretty well now. Whoops. As he say that, almost thrown away. Coleman tries to save it. That's going to be off the backs of wow. UNLV. See, when they had the two-on-one that time, Coleman needed to go to the basket and create a passing lane so that they would make him pay. If Coleman made that catch, he would have ended up with a 15-foot jump shot. No good. You know, he had that Thursday night. He had trouble handling the ball. Remember? You saw that update. The Fighting Irish still leading the Horned Frogs in Charlotte. Here's Wade on Smith. Norris Coleman, six foot eight. He's a junior. He lost a year of eligibility because of the high school diploma problems. Here's Richmond. Won't go for him. Gilliam with the rebound. He averages over nine rebounds a game. Out to Banks. He'll pull up with a three-pointer. They're not hitting them right now. And Kansas State trailing 11 to 5. But if they don't start dropping, this game could open up in a hurry. Yeah, but the one thing you know, they're not going to stop taking them. Yeah. <laughs> No conscience, right? <laughs> now, Coleman will lean on. That's a tough shot, and he got it. Morris Coleman, who grew up in the Jacksonville area, makes it 11-7. That's your time. 14 minutes to go in the first half. Right now, Kansas State is matching up in a 3-2 zone, and they're just laying back. Oh, no. Bledsoe tried to block that with no way. Two inches shorter. Couldn't get up. See? If you're going to play zone, you cannot let them flash posts into the low area and then receive the pass. Smith now will kick it off to Bledsoe. Bledsoe takes it inside. Oh, is that a tough running hook? Charles Bledsoe, who played at Beaumont High School in St. Louis before going to Moberly Community College. And it's 13-9, the Rebels. Here is Wade, averaging over 10 assists a game. He had 21 in one game, which is an NCAA record. See, they're flattening out the zone, but see, that's the second pass that went right into the dotted line area. Here's a three on two. And it's to Coleman, and Coleman's hit two in a row. And all of a sudden now, they've cut it to two. Well, when they're coming down, Wade keeps catching up to the break. But it's interesting that he hasn't tried to block a shot yet, and he's ran, he ran by both shooters the last two times down. Patio, they're still not hitting the three-pointer. Kansas State has weathered an early move by UNLV and probably playing now with more confidence. Yeah, but like Coach Kruger said, Gary, they like enough tempo, but they do not want to get into an 85 to 90 point game. It can easily happen with these guys. They're averaging almost 93 a game. Wade will reset. Wade, who started at Oklahoma, went to El Camino Junior College. Here is Armand Gelly. He a tough shot for the baseline, but he got it. 15 to 11 now. UNLV, and there's a steal by Banks. And he'll try a three-pointer. Rebound, Richmond. On the outlet passes, whether it's coming from out of bounds or off of a miss, the Kansas City receiver, a Kansas State receiver, must come to the ball. What they're trying to do is run away from the ball. Smith brings it out to Richmond. High altitude here. You wonder how it'll affect the play of these two teams. Richmond inside. Big Big strong. Richmond. He leans in so well. That was a major league move, Gary. That was a design clear out, and they gave him the entire left side of the floor, and he split the double team. Our viewers in the ACC and Ohio area will be leaving us momentarily to see another game of special interest in their local areas. That was excellent. I, I, we should see more of that on the Duckins in that low post area. Here's Henson. Driving inside, Banks with the block. He may have had the shot outside, tried to take it inside. Patio. Out it comes to Patio. Gerald Patio, who played at Seminole Junior College in Oklahoma, where he was a Junior College All-American a year ago, makes it 17-13 for UNLV. So when you play Vegas, you cannot relax when they come down to your end of the floor. All five guys must get back and help on the rebounding. Richmond now trying to take Patio in. Nice ducking move. And Richmond, who just took over in the game Thursday, scored 34 points, now has hit the last two baskets for Kansas State. Richmond has major league moves, not only in the low post area, but off the dribble, and then he also has the perimeter game. Richmond has chintz and beat it, Wade off.
off the dribble here right now. And the white shirts converge to help. There's your kick out. Now here comes the pressure on the rotation. When they run at you, they are not running at you to stop you off the dribble. They're running at you to contest the shot. Now you have to be a really tough shooter to shoot with that kind of pressure. Look at this now. Update on the three-pointer. UNLV's hit only one of ten of the of nine attempts. And that is one of their outstanding assets. So they should pick that up in a hurry. There's a traveling call on Will Scott. But that's okay. Lon Kruger said to us yesterday that once they beat the pressure in the backcourt, they're going for the score. UNLV shooting 33%. Kansas State doing a good job for the field with 53. They've not attempted the three-pointers you saw earlier. Here's Willard who's checked into the ball game. Six foot 11. Dave Willard. Gilliam. Nice lead with that left hand. Now that's his fifth catch where they've thrown him a lob pass. Now they're going to have to change their strategy in what they are doing in front of him. This is Mark Jobbins, 41, having difficulty in the backcourt. Got to get it up. Sophomore out of Humboldt, Kansas, the steal by Wade. Up it comes to Gary Graham. And all of a sudden now, after falling behind by two points, they jumped on top by two, 21-19. Jobbins gets it out to Scott. Will Scott, corner Coleman. He is four of four in this game. Oh, on the steal in the back court, it was a three on one. Now, some people say, do they actually do that? They do it because of their great foot speed in the back court in the rotations of the other two players. Kansas State shooting very well. Gilliam, turn around. Rebound. Look at that excellent rebound by Coleman. Wade almost came up with a steal. Henson who is really having to expend a lot of energy getting the ball up the floor. You see TCU now has cut the lead to two against Notre Dame. Here is Scott, Coleman, and Wade battle for it, and Mark Wade's got it. Wade out of San Pedro, California. That's going to be a two-pointer. A two-point shot by Gary Gray. Everyone should keep noticing how when Vegas is fast-breaking, when they knew, know that they're not going for the layup, how the right side player will always run for the three-point field goal. There's Wade batting it out, and it's going to be off of Kansas State. Substitutions now. Freddie Banks coming in. Richmond, Smith, and Bledsoe come in. Let's go back to the last steal by UNL. 